Hi, Neil. Okay, good. Hi, guys. Um, I guess I just wanted to first uh, thank you all for being on today. Um, I recognize many, many of the names on here, and uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it's an exciting part of my uh, career. But um, thank you, thank you to all of you guys. Uh, <laughs> I got to live out my dream. So um, on that note, uh, thank you all, like I said, again, for being here. And uh, uh, please fire away with any questions you have. Hi, Neil. It, it, uh, are, we, are we just able to go? Or, uh, Dan or Jim, are you going to? You can just yeah. You can just go whenever and when you don't ask a question. If you can just mute your mute your phones or, or your computers, that'd be great. Uh, Neil, it's Alby. Uh, congratulations on uh, on your career and and uh, the fact that you were able to do so much, uh, including playing in your hometown. What what were you most proud of um, in your career? Um, you know, I, I think that. When I was uh, when I was younger and coming up and and, and being obviously uh, very interested in baseball with my dad and my uncle and my brothers, um, it was ingrained in me pretty early on that I, I wanted to try to be a baseball player. And of course, so many people say, so many a lot of kids say, "Hey, I want to be a big leader girl. I want to play in the NFL. I want to do that." Uh, but it, it truly, in my mind, there was no there was no other option for me. I wanted to play in the big leagues. I wanted to do everything I could to uh, get there. So, you know, growing up, you sacrifice a lot. You play, um, you know, you, you miss you miss a lot of events in high school to be at Saturday tournaments and things like that. But, um, you know, basically going from a, a, a pirate fan to being in the organization to getting in the big leagues and, 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 and struggling personally and struggling as a team and then getting over that hump and having – a really solid stretch as a group and as, as an individual player and, and then going on to, to uh, several other teams and, and playing pretty meaningful baseball. And, and uh, I just think about how, how much goes into to, to a career and what that looks like and, and how, um, how fun it was. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, more, more than anything, it's just I'm proud to sit here and, and talk to you guys and, and – uh, <laughs> And, and, and say that I have no regrets. Thank you. Neil, along those lines, living out your dream with your boyhood team, to hit a walk-off home run on opening day, looking back on that moment, how cool of a life moment was that, Neil? Yeah, I mean, that was special. And obviously, every opening day holds its own kind of significance and, and um you can't, especially in the clubhouse when when you have veteran guys that are that are kind of on the back ends of their career. They they always tell the they always tell the younger guys, "Hey boys, cherish cherish this day. Opening day is the the, the biggest, the most optimistic day of the year for everybody because it's a clean slate personally and as as a team." So when you have when I have highlights of, of my career that include hitting a walk off home run and a couple years earlier hitting a a, a grand slam at Wrigley Field when it's partially snowing down. Uh, I have a lot of memories of, of those opening days, but, you know, to, to do it in Pittsburgh and uh, during a season where there was so much optimism surrounding the team and, uh, you know, to kind of feel like uh, I helped jumpstart the, the season, that was that was definitely a significant moment, uh, not just from an individual standpoint, from but from a team standpoint to get the ball rolling on that particular season. Neil, you know, what's your process for a next move or you know, where's your head at? Like, what, what do you want to do now? So, um, you know, the, the, basically how I got to this point and, and obviously yesterday was, was, or, or today is the, was the official, um, retirement, but my, my thoughts really were stay, stay prepared for baseball through March and through spring training. And if no opportunities arose, then, um, you know, then kind of reassess and, and, and see what, maybe the next thing was, and, you know, honestly, for me, basically this, this spring, summer and fall, I'm going to try to not commit to, to a whole lot. I'm going to try to catch up with my family and with my friends and, and do a lot of the things that I haven't been able to do for, for a long time, uh, 
you know, such as going summer vacation and, and, and July 4th and, and go to pirate games and, and have family events that you miss during the, during the, the spring and summer. So, um, uh, obviously I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to have an opportunity to, to, uh, you know, sit down with, with the pirates people, which, you know, we've had some very general conversations about maybe what could potentially be involved with moving forward. But, uh, to speak directly about it there, you know, we're, we're really in the, in the early process. And like I said, I'm going to take the next several months to kind of play catch up with, with my life and then, um, kind of figure out what the next move is moving forward. But yeah, conversations have ha happened, uh, a little bit internally with the pirates. Um, I'm also, uh, just started, uh, partnered up with a couple people and starting a, a program called no off season exposure which people that live in the North Hills might be familiar with no off season and some of the facilities, the turf fields. And, and we're building this beautiful facility in Russellton, which is basically Deer Lakes. That's going to be a, a four a, a basically a, what looks like a pirate city complex for all turf fields with lights four soccer fields. And essentially the program that I'm uh, involved in directly will be the baseball exposure program. And, and we're hoping to have, technology on these fields for the high school kids essentially to have showcases and to have showcase tournaments with some of the better teams in the area eventually so that scouts can come and watch in one place and really in, in, in a lot of different directions outside of western Pennsylvania uh, and being a person that's grown up in this area uh, I knew how difficult it was to, to get seen in baseball and I had numerous trips to Tennessee, Florida, uh, Georgia, all these, all these places that were not particularly easy to get to. So we're hoping to give kids in this, in this area that have the dream of going and playing, whether it's a D3 kid or a kid that maybe not get a college scholarship to possibly go D3, D2, maybe a major league, uh, potential major league player. We're hoping to give them this opportunity to um, have all this information at their, ex at their uh, uh, expense to, to give them the best opportunity to get seen and to get to that next next level. So that's kind of the gist of, of what's of what's going on, and it's in the early, it's still in the early stages. There's only two fields done over there right now, uh, two baseball fields and two soccer fields. But if any of you ever get a chance to go out there, and I'm sure hopefully uh, we'll get another opportunity to have more conversations with a lot of you about what's going on over there because it it, it could be a really really great uh, facility. So in general. I have a little bit of that going on and, and it'll be slow to, to start, but going into the fall and the winter of this, this next year, I'll probably have several things on my plate. So looking forward to them all. Neil, how hard was it to come to this decision and how did you come to this decision to retire from baseball? Um, you know, I, I, I wouldn't say the writing was, was on the wall uh, per se over the last couple of years, but I think as an every, as, as a guy that was an everyday player coming up and kind of transitioning into a, uh, more of a utility role. Um, to, to, to be honest, the, the, the game is transitioning into a, into a place where a lot of those utility roles are now being uh, taken by guys that are in AAA and, 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 and maybe their careers haven't taken off or they've got a cup of coffee and they can play multiple positions and so on and so forth. And, and when I saw that happening um, several years ago, that trend started to occur, I thought it was prudent to make sure that I gave my chance at any um, at, at any expense to play first, play second, play third, play some outfield, even throw the catcher's gear on and catch some bullpens every once in a while. Um, so when this past year, actually, the, the, the piece that kind of was an uh-oh for me was when I, when I signed with the Phillies, uh, I knew that offensively they had, you know, basically seven or eight players that, that played almost every single day and never really came off the field. But as a, as a bench guy in the National League, I thought that there was a really good opportunity to, uh, to still stay heavily involved. And when the rules changed from National League to DH, that was kind of an uh-oh moment for me because I knew that my value uh, in the role that I was going to be asked to do uh, certainly <laughs> it dwindled a little bit. And, uh, you know, we get into September and we we'll play a bunch of games in a couple of days and all of a sudden um, they needed somebody to bounce in the outfield and, and they didn't feel 100% confident with me going out there. So the next move was really to, to DFA me. And uh, that's when I, I, I kind of thought, you know, it may be tough to get – a job just for everything coming into this year, just with everything that was going on. So that's kind of how the, this, this, uh, it, it, it came, um, to, to full circle to this point. But like I said, I was, I, I had my normal off season baseball routine all the way up through four weeks ago. So. 
Neil, you used to kid us a little bit sometimes when we'd be around your locker. Oh, you got to get the Pittsburgh guys' perspective on this stuff. I'm just wondering, as you moved around to other teams after you left Pittsburgh, was it a relief at all, or did you not have as much fun as you did playing in your hometown? Well, you'd be you'd be surprised. I mean, um, I I don't I, I don't think maybe there was more than five to ten people in my three years in New York that that recognized me as a baseball player. And probably half of those people were the doorman at the, the apartment complex I lived in. So, um, it, but to be honest with you, that was that that was kind of nice because uh, you know my my role in Pittsburgh and and I and I relish that role was to to kind of be the person that people came to and and to uh, you know to 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 be the the, the guy that uh, understood really everything that came involved with not just pirate baseball but Pittsburgh sports media and Pittsburgh sports in general. So. Um, you know, certainly even going to bigger markets like the Mets and the Yankees uh, and the Phillies, my, my, my role was a little bit different at those places. It wasn't as much of a, a, a out in front leader. It was kind of more of a behind the scenes type, type of leader. So, um, but yeah, like I said, there, there wasn't, there wasn't many moments when I was in New York. And I think the other half of the people were ones that uh, were Pirates fans that lived in New York too. So <laughs> You know, I'm curious, how do you reflect on your time in Pittsburgh? I mean, obviously you guys had a really great run there, especially towards the end and, and sort of, you know, was there ever, I mean, the fact that you want to be involved in the organization certainly in, indicates that everything is is cool, but is there a part of you that's wistful that, that thinks, man, would, it might've been nice to kind of, kind of stick around? Well, sure. I, you know, I think as somebody that, that, that was drafted by this organization, came up through this organization, in my in my mind, it would have been amazing to to play my entire career for for Pittsburgh, but uh, just kind of where where baseball is and 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 you know the economics of things and the and the business end of it, it it's it's naive to think that you know nine ninety nine percent of of most players just that's just not the reality. So um, that was a harsh reality for for me in general, and and um, you know like you said, I. I I, I want to stay involved in this organization because uh, I love the people that I, I was able to work with in, in all aspects from coaching to front office to uh, ownership to, um, you know, workers at the, at, at, at the field. And, um, you know, something that I, I, I felt was, was very important to, to, to me, um, you know, like I said, was being part of this organization, but, you know, giving, expanding and, and, and passing along my wealth, my, my wealth of knowledge within the, within the baseball game. And like I said, I've seen so many different aspects. I, in leaving Pittsburgh, the, the thing that it, the, the perspective it gave me was to see bigger markets. I played for the, the biggest market, one of the biggest markets in the world in the New York Yankees. And I played for one of the smallest markets in the uh, Miami Marlins and the Pirates somewhere in between and the Milwaukee Brewers somewhere in between. So, and I won a hundred games. I've lost a hundred games. My perspective on baseball has been very vast. And so I feel it's, it, it's important for me to, do what I can to give back where I can. So that's that's kind of my general thoughts uh, as my as my career ends here and I move into a different chapter of my life. And you know, when uh, when you and Hanny were, were watching the game last week against the Padres, what was that like? Knowing, I mean, that's the first game you're watching now as a former player, and yeah. and what's that going to be like as a fan or coach or broadcaster or whatever you're going to morph into next? Well, I actually, I actually took my daughter to, to opening day, and that was really cool. And she's she's only four, but I stuffed her full of cotton candy and peanuts and and, and hot dogs and, and and all that. But I remember just sitting there and thinking, wow, this is really cool and and, and something that I I just I I flash back to when I was uh, a senior in high school and was going to baseball games in in two thousand three, uh, going into two thousand four. So um, it, I thought that. I thought that in my brain when it did end that I would have a hard time watching baseball. And actually I'm looking over my shoulder and I just watched Andrew's first at bat uh, against the, the San Francisco Giants. So excuse me if I'm a little uh, looking over, but um, no, I, I loved it. I love, I love sitting there. And like you said, uh, Hanny and I were, 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 were up in the suite <clears throat> talking baseball and it was just so natural. And we talked about, uh, you know, back in my day stuff, which is not very long ago, but how the game has changed and how the pitching philosophy has changed, and how the hitting philosophy has changed. But like I alluded to a minute ago, I, we both felt fortunate to kind of live in both of those realms and to play in the, the, the 2009, 2010, 2011, when 
pitching was sinker, slider, changeup. And fast forward five years, and now it's throw as hard as you can at the top of the zone with with, with twelve to six breaking balls. So I feel I feel proud that I was able to survive really through a large portion of both of those pieces because that's the name of the game in baseball is is adapting and, and um, you know surviving and. You know, there's only, I call them the one percenters, the Andrew McCutcheons, the, the, the Mike Trouts, like, you know, these guys, these guys are able to adapt year in and year out outside of, of significant injury. And for people like myself that had to grind and, 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 and continue to, to adapt and, uh, and, and, and squeak things out, I feel very fortunate to have played as long as I did for a lot of amazing organizations. And yeah, when you look at um, you know, the day, in 2004, the press conference in Pine Ridge, and to where you're sitting right now, um, did it? Does it feel like a, a really long journey, uh, full of ups and downs, or does it feel like it just flew by? How, 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 what's your perspective there? Oh, uh, it, it feels like it flew by, and, and a lot of people that have contacted me over the course of the last, of the last 24 hours, really, um, they uh, that that were ex-players that I've, you know, whether I've had a really good close relationship with or, or lost contact with. The, the memories that I had in low A or in high school or in AAU ball when I was in seventh, eighth grade, those memories never leave you. And I can remember just vividly, you know, playing in national tournaments as a, as a, as a youth player and amateur and, and playing in, uh, you know, doing the showcase with the Pirates in 2004. And, um, you know, so you don't, you don't forget those memories. You don't really uh, forget those people. Sometimes you forget moments especially over a, a 162 game season sometimes you forget certain things but you you very rarely forget people and especially significant people that have played a role and there's so many of those people that i that i've come across and feel very fortunate to to have have been able to learn a, a little or a lot from neil uh, you talk about the people that that, that, that that influenced you in some way uh could you talk a little bit please about the the people in baseball that you met in the Pirates organization and elsewhere, uh, people like Bill Mazeroski and, and 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 what that meant to your career. Yeah, and and you know, I, I don't want to I don't want to leave anybody out because you know, like I said, I was in the organization for for twelve years. But um, yes, I, I think about I think about when I changed from a, a catcher to a, to a second base to a to an infielder to third base, and then I bounced to to many multiple positions and guys like Tom Prince and, and Woody Heike took me under their, their wing when I was an 18 year old kid that didn't know how to wash his clothes. And I'm stuck in the, the old pirate city, pirate city motel down there and just trying to figure out when I needed to go to breakfast and when I needed to go get changed and what happens in between, you know, morning workouts and the game in the afternoon. And uh, then you fast forward to people like Bill Maserati, who, you know, could have very easily just sat on the sidelines and, and enjoyed his his retirement and everything that he accomplished at spring training, but he didn't do that. He talked about what what he thought made himself uh, so successful, not just as an infielder, but as a teammate and as a hitter and, and everything combined. And, you know, you, you, you soak all that up as a player. And some of the things that he taught me at second base were just – uh, they, they helped accelerate the process much easier. And I it went from trying to survive to – to trying to, to, to excel at the position. And, you know, I think I, I did pretty well at that. And, you know, you, I get to the big leagues and obviously we had several different managers when, when I was there, but, uh, you know, Clint Hurdle was, was, was such a great motivator and somebody that, that really kept us, kept us going and kept us, um, you know, working together for a common cause. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of the, a lot of the hitting coaches that have put their staple on me, Jeff Branson, uh, somebody that I, and, 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 uh, Ray Sears, two guys that I, I was with basically from A-ball all the way up. So, you know, like I said, I, I, I hate to for, forget anybody, but some of these people are just coming to, to, to my mind. And so many of them have been impactful on, on small levels and large levels. So, you know, to, to, to any of them, to anybody that, that I've come across, you, you know, thank you for everything that, that, uh, that, that you've helped me with and that we've accomplished together, including yourselves in the media and in, in Pittsburgh in particular. Thanks. Neil, what does it mean to you to help have helped get the Pirates to the playoffs after the, the 20 years of losing? What does that mean to you personally? Yeah, I, I mean, I take great pride in that. I, I, also, I also feel like um, I was just a, a small piece of that, a, 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 cog of, a small cog of that per se. I mean, 
you know, when I got to the big leagues in, 2000, in September of 2009, um, it was, it it was a tough environment. It was it was one that, that needed a lot of work, and there was a lot of pieces that were kind of thrown at the at the roster to try to get to that that point of having that that core nucleus to, to take us to the next level. And fast forward us to 2012, when we had a really good first half and kind of fell off in the second half. We had some really good pieces there, and then all of a sudden they did a great job of surrounding us with uh, quality veterans and and and. Uh, you know, I think uh, I think in 2013, middle of the season, Garrett Cole came up, and he was obviously one of the one of the better players I've ever played with. And AJ Burnett, and, and I may be off base with with my with my years, but um, basically, you know, the the core group that we had that were there, including myself and Andrew and and, and, Star, and Starling and, and and Polanco, you know, we knew that we had something special there, and they did such a good job of. of of, of mixing and matching the right pieces and not just the right pieces, but the right guys to buy into what we were trying to do, you know, because we weren't going to be in for the, for the, for the hundred million dollar player. That was just the reality, but we knew that if we played together and we, you know, collectively as an offensive group carried out our approach and grinded out teams. And then on the offensive side, we knew that if we got to the seventh, sixth, seventh inning with a two, three run lead, the chances of us closing the door with who we had back there were, were really, really good. And, that was our that was our recipe for success of, of that that stretch that we that we that we won a lot of baseball games. But you know, personally, I, I take I take great pride in just being being a part of that whole process and um, seeing it go from from a hundred loss year to a hundred to a hundred win year, basically in a course of three four years. Neil, you know, on that note, uh, first of all, congratulations on a great career. It's been a pleasure covering you. Um, on that note. How much do you feel in whatever capacity that you could be with the Pirates that you can share some of those experiences with this group and some of the young prospects coming up that, that may have to endure something similar? And do you feel like that's something that you can share your experiences and do you see some similarities? Yeah, like I said, I, I you know, things as small as, as hitting with guys in the offseason that live in the area that are minor leaguers or guys that are playing in independent ball, I've, I, I've, I've found it really fulfilling to – to when we when I hit with those guys to to you know it, it, it talk them through things and, and 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 let them know to have a purpose when they're uh, when they're going out and, and 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 doing their work and making them understand that you know the work you put in is gonna it, it is gonna reflect uh, down the line and you have to earn you have to earn your keep in baseball and it's such a it's such a difficult sport and, and the, the odds are just so stacked against you at all times of, of of the year that it's just uh, one of those things that I feel like I have a great perspective on. Cause like I said, I feel like I've, I've, I've been on good teams. I've been on in between teams. I've been on bad teams. I've been, I've had good years. I've had in between years. I've had terrible years. And when you do that and you, and you have that, that thought process for a long time, your thought process shifts from kind of trying to survive in the game of baseball to uh, you know, to, to, Matt trying to maximize your attributes and, and, and your character and passing that along and helping guys that, because it's stressful as a, as a, as a rookie and as a first and second year guy, because you're just trying to survive, like I said, and you're taking at bats and you're living and dying with every hit that you can possibly get. And you're, you know, you're constantly looking over your shoulder at times and, you know, pitchers, you know, a relief pitcher might go out there and, and, and throw really well, and all of a sudden he gobbles up three innings of, and, and throws 35 pitches and has to, has to go back down to the minor leagues, and he hasn't done anything. So, you know, for, for me, I think I think there's if, – if there were a, a perfect role for me, I don't know, but something, something similar to like a special assistant role where I could have my hand in a little bit of player development or a hand in, in working with guys individually or working with guys as a, as a group within the organization, those type of things – interest me uh, a lot because I know how impactful it was for me to learn from veterans and you learn a lot more as a player hearing things from things from other players coaches and managers uh, it's fantastic to get their point of view but they have so much more on their plate uh, when you're hearing things from other veterans and, and, and other players that have been through so much it makes your day-to-day -day much easier because you 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 see what other guys go through, you know what other guys go through. And if you're prepared, you know, you're given your best chance to, to succeed. And that's kind of my, 
synopsis of, of, of baseball in a nutshell and, and what I kind of live by, but you get, you fine tune it a little bit more as time goes along. So, you know, if I can, if I can share that in any way, shape or form that, uh, that interests me. Neil, what about from a broadcasting perspective? Do you have any interest in, I don't know, taking Robbie's job or going over to the TV side? <laughs> I don't think I don't think I could ever reach Robbie's le- level. Let's 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 call that what it is. I mean, his, no, you're correct. You're correct. His you hair is always on point. His 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 face is always freshly shaven. He's he's always looking good. But no, you know, like I said, I, I find it natural. To, like I said, to talk baseball and to um and to interact with younger players and to sit there and watch the game and analyze it. So I, I feel like. And I'm not discrediting any that that, it, that it's easy because that I know that's not the case. Um, but I think that it's something that could be, you know, somewhat of a natural uh, next next step for me if 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 we were to go down that that road. And maybe there's a a scenario where I where I uh, jump in the booth a, a, a couple times at the, at the end of this year or something along those lines. I I don't know. These these are conversations that that we're going to have moving forward and. Um, you know, to see how I like it. And, and you know, it, but in a nutshell, you know, right, right now and in the near term, that, that baseball schedule per se, I've done it for almost 20 years. So I, I'd like to kind of get away from that to, to, to a degree. But I know that, like I said, I, I love watching baseball. I love talking baseball. I love uh, talking, hitting and the intricacies of, of everything that, that's involved with, uh, you know, especially playing infield or switch hitting or whatever that may be. So we'll see if that's something that, that, that uh, really interests me going forward. To, but to this point, it's, it's something that's uh, very intriguing to me. It's something that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, you know, ask a lot of questions about to, to Bob Walk and to Greg Brown and to, and to Robbie and all these guys that have done it for a long time. Neil, I know you've shared a lot of your memories. Um, is, is there one that stands out above all, whether it's as a player? or just in your major league career, is there one that you, when you think about being a major league baseball player, is there one moment in your career where you say, okay, that, that's, that's my favorite. That's the moment that all the hard work paid off. Well, it's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's gotta be the, the 2013 wild card game. And, uh, you know, I told this story, story earlier on, on, uh, on the radio, just about when I think it was like mid September, uh, second, third week of September of 2000, 2013, we win a one nothing game over U Darvish in, in Texas, and Garrett Cole pitched a, a gem, and I made the last out. I caught, I, I caught a grounder and threw the first, and I asked for the ball back because we had won it. That was the day we won the, 80, the 82nd game. And that was the that was the way we knew that we weren't going past that 20 year mark of, of being under 500. And so, um, you know, that's that's something that strikes home to me because. It, it it that 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 night uh, that that wild card night was a culmination, in my opinion, of twenty years of frustration brought into one one stadium, and not just the stadium, but the people on the on the streets and and uh, you know on the on the bridges and all of that. And I took so much pride. Forget any individual accolade that I may have had from you know a silver slugger to whatever. You know that that moment for me was so. Uh, prideful and something that I will, I won't forget one second of that, that entire game and that entire night, because I felt it, my family felt it, my friends felt it, my teammates felt it. And they finally, they finally understood what this, this city and this community, uh, how passionate they are about their sports. And that night just brought back Anybody that may have been on the fence and said, oh, this team hasn't won for, for a while. Why am I going to back them? That year, and especially the second half of that year going to the playoffs, those people were 100% in. And they showed up in full form that night, and, and we, we, we played well and, and, and won, and it was just something that I'll, I'll never forget. And, and a lot of – almost every guy that you ask outside of, you know, some guys that have played that, that played that night or were on that team that won World Series or something along those lines, I almost guarantee they're going to bring up that night. We take one or two more for Neil, and we can move on. One, one, a couple more, if there are any more. 